Superheroes are oversaturated. What a bold claim, I know. It's such a non-statement to make online that I apologize for being the 15th person to tell you that opinion today. You might be annoyed by the sheer volume of media coming out over the past, oh god, has it been that long? Maybe you've tried tuning it out, but there's just no escaping it. You might have become jaded, even if you hated the MCU for years. He can't keep getting away with it! Even if you were Martin Scorsese burning copies of Thor 3 in his backyard. Even if you violently assaulted a trick-or-treater for wearing a Captain America outfit on Halloween. You will never hate superheroes more than Garth Ennis, the writer of the 2006 comic, The Boys. Eventually for any genre, once it goes on for long enough, common tropes develop and are recognized by the audience. A jump scare in a horror movie, the dear god moment in a disaster film, the obligatory all is lost moment. The all is lost moment! And superhero films are no exception. In fact, the MCU became so successful it established new tropes that never previously existed before. Nobody has to break anything. Clearly you've never made an omelet. You beat me by one second. Funniest thing I've seen in ages. <laughs> Which is why an adaptation of The Boys was seen as a breath of fresh air. It poked fun at what the superhero genre had become, a satire of every soulless company that only cared about marketing and public image. Soups existed in a world of cinematic universes, and to promote the next product. But before knowing what the show would actually be, the only thing the promotion showed was this guy's girlfriend getting turned into jelly by a knockoff version of The Flash. And that was enough for me. You see, I never heard of the boys' comic before the show was announced. And before the first season even premiered, I decided to read the entire comic run from beginning to end. My takeaway after reading through all of this was that it was alright. Like, I enjoyed it, but it was in the same brain space as Postal. It was grimy, made you feel kind of dirty reading through it, but it had entertainment value. After season one, outside of the initial premise, characters, and certain events, turns out the adaptation changed pretty much everything. The joke was on me for reading it, I guess. Oops! The original boys comic was like it was written by an edgy teen that thought adding the most amount of graphic violence, swearing, sex, and racial slurs would make his story stand out. Uh, yeah, he's Superman, but he, uh, he eats babies. Ugh. <sighs> You know when book readers have their favorite novel adapted and then swear until their dying breath that the book was better than the adaptation? This is the exact opposite of that. The show makes small but necessary changes that had they not otherwise, it would be far lesser for it. Now, is the show always perfect? No. Sometimes it's a bit on the nose with its satire. But I truly believe, no matter where you sit on the aisle, or what your views on the show's politics are, this show at least has something to say. Something that the comic tried to do, sort of, but then gave up halfway through. The show takes seeds that were planted and lets them grow, leading to a story that isn't simply for shock value. Some shit burns. <laughs> Think of this as an interesting lesson in writing. Garth Ennis is a comic writer most famous for writing Preacher and that Punisher one-off where he kills literally everyone. It's a pretty open secret that Ennis hates superheroes. And I'm not just saying what superheroes became or superhero media. Like brunch, like what is brunch? The very notion of them. He believes they have done nothing but sully the medium of comics and make them only for kids. Which, I mean, is he wrong? Eh. He likes Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman, and then that's it. Everything else, he despises, especially Captain America. Oh, don't get him started on that old Cap. He's kind of the original hater of cape sh**. Which, while respectable, that hatred goes incredibly far. Goes farther than just making jokes about MCU fans. The way The Boys is written is almost like a manifesto against the very idea of costume soups. And throughout the entire run, the plot follows a similar formula. The Boys come across a superhero who is a loose parody of a pre-existing character. This soup, though, has some terrible flaw, and usually it's just the same flaw. 
This hero is Martian Manhunter, but he's a degenerate. This character is Iron Man, but he's a pervert. Oh look, it's the X-Men, but Professor X actually diddles kids. There is really no deconstruction of the trope like with Watchmen, or a clever parody like One Punch Man. It's more like straight up hatred. Like you can imagine Garth writing every possible scenario for how a soup can get massacred by his edgy guys dressed in trench coats or the military. In the show, superheroes are allegories for the egotistical celebrity. They will do anything for their own image. It's a game that you play for fame and fortune, and that reflects in every aspect of how these characters think. Drives them to be selfish, do terrible things, but not to an unrealistic degree. You can see parallels to real-world shitty behavior. The thing is, most of that complexity doesn't exist in the comics. Superheroes in this world that Ennis wrote are irredeemable, cartoonish psychopaths. There is no complexity to them. Their mentality is less based on celebrity status and the corrupting influence of fame, and more like the mentality of the gang from Clockwork Orange. Any kind costume soup in some way is a sexual deviant, a racist, or a violent psycho. Now if I could, I would show you a lot of examples, but I'm trying to not get demonetized and banned off the site. All of these horrendous things that my eyes had to witness never build onto something. Instead, it just feels like a hit piece on fictional people that don't actually exist. Sometimes, simply the message in The Boys is, this hero is gay, these heroes are ghetto. The boys collect more often than anything else pictures of sex acts that they can blackmail people with. Now sometimes there are superheroes that happen to be good people, and if they are, they're portrayed as pathetic jokes who literally could not hurt a fly. Maybe their only quality is that they look stupid. Or sometimes, as the comic goes on, there's no reason at all. They're just a soup, and they're fodder for the boys to defend themselves against. Even when they aren't supposed to kill soups, and Huey accidentally punches right through a guy, it turns out to be alright and Huey shouldn't feel bad because the guy had a hamster shoved up his ass the entire time. Lemme wings. The original Boys comic is that guy that stumbles onto the stage at open mic night, says they're a master of satire, and then says the n-word. Now just because a story has edgy elements, that doesn't make it necessarily lesser. The show has messed up stuff all the time, it's just it contributes to the bigger story showcases how far a character has gone, or what the stakes are. The comic showcases f***ed up stuff just for shock value. And as a result, it makes the story less about our protagonist facing off against a corporation and its celebrity heroes, and more our protagonist just going around taking out crazy cartoon people. As you see, despite the show mainly being around the boys and Vought, that is not what the comics portray at all. Probably should have said this at the start, but spoilers for all of the comics and all three seasons. It wasn't until season 3 when I realized what truly made the adaptation so different than the comics, and it was the inclusion of Temporary Compound V. You see, the Vault Labs cooked up some green Temporary V that makes you a soup for 24 hours. Huey and Butcher both start taking V as a way to even that power dynamic, while MM and Frenchie believes this crosses a line and will make them hypocrites. This dilemma never exists in the comics. Despite hating soups, Butcher injects Huey with V without his consent, and then laughs at him for getting mad. Through experiments, Butcher is actually superpowered at the start of the story. All of the boys are. This ethical question of whether using Compound V is hypocritical or not just never comes up. And considering how many soups they do kill, if they didn't have V, they probably would just die. But what this does is it removes an essential element that makes the show work so well. Tension. In the show, whenever the boys run into a superhero, it feels like they're up against a legitimate threat. It's like having a bomb in the middle of the room. These are people who can do whatever they want without repercussions, and to defeat them, regular people have to use their wits and skills to take them down. The reason why the boys hate soup so much is reinforced with every scene. But in the comics, since the boys use V, that threat is gone. In fact, because most of the time the boys are just running into low-level idiots, Butcher and his gang often have the advantage. 
So the story is reduced to edgy characters dressed in trench coats just brutally tearing apart a bunch of costumed dorks. It's like Billy Butcher is just Ennis' cool OC that only exists to act out violent revenge fantasies against fictional people. When talking about characters, I don't want to make this a list of differences between the show and comics. If you want a true comparison, watch a Watch Mojo. Both of these have gone through so many differences, we'd be here all day if I listed them out. Because of the path the show has gone down, it has drastically altered these characters. It's put them in situations and challenges that have shaped them over three seasons, which can't really be said about the comics. Starlight and Huey, for most of the comic, don't even know what the other is doing, so many of their interactions are just Simon Pegg with a blonde naked chick. The show was able to deepen pretty shallow pools, and nowhere is that better shown than Homelander. The live-action adaptation of Homelander is one of the best villains in a show I've seen. Birth from a test tube, born to be a corporate product, Homelander is one big ball of narcissism, self-consciousness, and psychopathy. One aspect of this show's plot is just seeing the mental deterioration of Homelander. Now while that's kind of there in the comics, Homelander isn't really anything particularly special. He's done terrible things, he's forced himself onto women, leading to the death of Butcher's wife, but the comics have shown that superheroes do that all the time. In fact, Homelander forced himself onto Starlight along with Black Noir and A-Train. And this right here is a good example of my point. In the show, it's more of a message about workplace assault. And in the comics, it's just... Oh, that critical element of his character isn't really special in the comics. We see characters that are depicted in a far worse light than Homelander. Now, as you might remember, I did say that Homelander ate a baby, which is, yes, incredibly bad, but in the comic, these are simply shown in pictures. In fact, these pictures are something that Homelander doesn't remember doing. He talks to himself in a mirror, and then suddenly has a realization that he can do anything. In the show, when he does something bad, he knows he's doing it, and he doesn't care. But the comic Homelander actually does. He's disturbed by these pictures. Homelander just kind of is like, I'm crazy now, and decides to lead a superhero revolution. So let's talk about the worst part of the boys' comic, the ending. And so the soups take over the White House, because pretty much every hero had already been thinking about the same thing. Homelander kills the president, and that's that, except there's a plot twist. It turns out, Homelander didn't actually eat a child, or did any of those horrible things. It was Black Noir the entire time. Who could have guessed that Noir was actually a clone of Homelander? Yep, uh, Noir was a clone, whole time. The complex deterioration of a spoiled soup with parental issues that we see in the TV show? Yeah, that, that doesn't happen. At the end of the day, Butcher sums it all up as Homelander was just tricked into becoming a psychopath. Which is just... The worst twist? It undermines everything that made Homelander even remotely worse than other soups. Most of the bad things we thought Homelander did, well, Black Noir did it. At the end of the day, he's simply a big dummy that got bamboozled into going cuckoo. It was a prank! It was just fooling you! All Homelander really did was simply suggest to a bunch of other crazy people that they should take over the country. Don't worry, this plotline is resolved in like five minutes because it turns out the military had anti-soup missiles the entire time. So this really wasn't even that big of a deal. They all just die like idiots. That was it. That was the reason why Garth Ennis wanted the soups to join Homelander's revolution. It's so they could get absolutely decimated by the real cool guys, the military industrial complex. And with everything wrapped up in a nice neat bow, Butcher just decides to kill all the boys. Wait, what? Garth Ennis hates superheroes, so he wrote a power fantasy about people not dressed in costumes ripping apart nerds with their bare hands. To justify this, every superhero is an absolute lunatic. A narrative that explores the idea of superheroes like that Flash game where you blow up your buddy. The message is just that superheroes are cringe. Which might not be untrue in these times of MCU fatigue, but at the end of the day, the Boys teaches us a valuable lesson. 
to remember that too much hate towards something can become just as annoying and intolerable as the thing it's making fun of.